needs to unlock the doors of the gates of hell itself and let demons into your life. It's a fearful and frightful thing. And they've turned it into something on TV that they, people see so much that they become desensitized to that thing. And it doesn't seem, well, it's just, it's just make-believe. My friend, it's not make-believe. It's a real evil. You know what the Bible says about that? In Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 18, it says, Deuteronomy 18 and 9, it says, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, and, or that useth divination, or observe the times, or the uh, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. You know what? That's what this country suffered. One of the biggest things that we got, we've let witchcraft and things like that creep into our society and creep into our children's minds through the TV. You know, it said not to do the wickedness that you see in the land. One of the things that they, 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 they bring forth today, you got to worship the spirits. Who worship the spirits? The Indians and things like that. They worship the great spirit and all this other stuff. And you look at any of the Mayas and Incas, what, are they, what do you see on TV right now? They're just bombarding you with it. It's no coincidence, my friend. The 2012 thing, that Inca calendar, Mayan calendar, it's all wickedness. And the, and the devil's just slowly getting people worked up and taking the focus off of what the return of the Lord's going to be and putting it on as some kind of end thing that's just going to be weather going crazy and all this other stuff. That's what they want you to do. They want you to just kind of forget about what the Bible says about that stuff. It's all wicked. Well, I'm just going to read my horoscope just to, they're funny. My friend, that's a wicked thing, man. People have gotten so enamored with being entertained that they forget that this is wicked. I mean, you look at some of the stuff, the magician stuff that they show. You know, there's that dude, uh, whatever, Chris, whatever his name is. That, that's a scary thing, my friends. I, you turn that on, I believe you're letting demons in your house. I mean, you know, there's no way that a man levitates unless he's been drinking something, you know. But, I mean, it's a wicked thing. I believe it's one of our society's biggest things. You look at most of the kids and stuff nowadays, they don't believe in anything. They believe in, you know, rocks and charms and all this other stuff and, and good luck and bad luck. I mean, it's a wicked thing. And it's one of the biggest things, I believe, is partially why our country's in the state it's in. Because we've left off seeing God and want to look to Dr. Phil or what you need to do. You ever watch Dr. Phil? That guy don't know nothing. If that's even that's proper English in Kentucky. What you need to do is stop doing what you're doing when you've done it and you know what you did when you did do it. That's what you need to do. Well, what kind of advice is that? It's the craziest bunch of junk I ever heard. Just stop sinning and we wouldn't have the problem. That's the advice they need. They need the advice of the Bible. But they look to everything else that, but God because they don't want to be convicted. They want to teach you that there's a hundred ways you can get there. My friend, there's one way. That's through Jesus Christ. Amen. I mean, it's one of the biggest things with our society. I mean, you even look at, you know, Obama. Abomination. More like it. But you look at what he says. We're no longer a Christian nation, he says. That's a scary, scary thing for someone to say to me. And Christians have just let these things slide on by. And sat idle and not raised their voice to them. But that's something else. But I believe one of the most dangerous things in our country today is the witchcraft and the things that they let in, we let into our houses. Unawarely, just little things and little shows that don't, they may seem harmless. My friends, they're dangerous. They pollute the mind. What it does is it just makes that thing just a little bit. That way the next one doesn't seem as bad. And then before you know it, you're so far off base, you don't know where you're at. But the imagination of man was always wicked. That's what the Bible says in the days of Noah. I believe we're there. He said also in the days of Lot. Let's look like, let's see what Lot's day was like. Huh? Genesis 19. It 
starting in verse 1. It says, And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. And he said, Behold, now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night. And wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And, and they said, Nay, but we will abide in the streets all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned into, unto him, and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and did break unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the, of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house around, both old and young and all the people from every quarter. You notice one thing I just want to point out right here. It was the men of that city. It, did, it wasn't just the men. It was the boys. It was all. That house was out of order. They were compassing about. It was the men that came here. And this next verse here is a, uh, uh, we'll get into some things. And it says, And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. My friends, we all know what that means right there. We're talking about a time in society where that homosexual, that sodomite uh, behavior was acceptable. They were just, everybody in the city was doing it. My friends, we're coming to that place in our country. I mean, they legalized marriage, uh, homosexual marriage uh, and everything like that. It's becoming a place. I read an article somewhere. I can't watch the news, so I have to read on the Internet some things. It just drives me nuts. But I've seen where they had, you know, the Christmas tree at the White House had some ornaments on it about some homosexual rights activists, you know, hanging on. And I know a Christmas tree is, you know, just the world's way of doing things. But that's still, Christmas is still supposed to be our holiday. I mean, they're just blatantly just opening that thing. And that thing wouldn't have happened 30 or 20 or 30 years ago. Preachers wouldn't have had to preach on things like homosexuality. They didn't have to, you know, 40 years ago preach on that thing. It was something that was unacceptable. It was dirty, rotten, filthy, nasty. But in the days of Lot, they said, that's what it's going to be like when the sun, man, my friends, we're here. You look at history and anywhere that that became a, something that was common in society, it wasn't long before that society crumbled. You know, you look at any of the great civilizations that they say, where they, they practice those things, those civilizations crumbled quickly. And I believe in the last 10 years that that's become more and more commonplace in our country. That's why we're in dire straits. The economy, you know, oh, what are we going to do to fix the economy? Get right with God. Get out the book and read the manual, man. We'll get this country back right. You'll get this country's economy back online. Hey, if a man doesn't work, he doesn't eat. You know what I'm saying? Get back to the book. But in his day, it was the homosexuality. And you know what? You see where uh, Lot is compromising in here. And it says, uh, and Lot went out the door unto, unto them, and he, and he shut the door after him. And he said, I pray you, brethren. That's what we have today. The churches are loaded with folks that are letting homosexual preachers or uh, priests or whatever they want to call them. And they're calling them brothers. My friend, they're, you know, we should pray for those people. They're wicked. Uh, their mind is deceived. They're blinded. We need to pray for them with all our heart that the Lord would open up their blinders and they could see what the wickedness that they're doing is and the damage that they're doing to their own body on that thing. I mean, my friends, you look over there in Romans where God's talking about that thing. It's the only place in the Bible where God mentions the sin where he says, I'll give you up. I'll give you up. I'll give you up. My friends, my family can give me up. My church can give me up. Everybody can give me up. But if God gives me up, I'm hopeless. It's the only sin in the Bible where God says, I'll give you up. He'll let you be blinded. But that's where they're at. That's where we're at in our society today. He said, brethren. He called them, Lot, was that your brothers? No.